Welcome back to uh, Yakayima TV. Thank you for watching our channel. Today our guest is Cesar Stup, research scientist at the Brightlands Material Center. And we're going to talk about uh, the strength of 3D printed parts and particularly in polymers. So uh, welcome Cesar. Uh, I'm very intrigued to find out what you're going to tell us. So share your uh, screen with us and tell what you uh, are doing currently. Okay. Do you have it? Yeah. Okay, let me put on uh, presenter mode. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Cesar Augusto. I'm a materials engineer working as a scientist uh, in Brandon's Materials Center. And today I'm gonna show uh, one of our newest developments in 3D printing and explain uh, the process and our ambitions. But to start with, I'd like to give a small introduction about who we are. Uh, Brandon's Materials Center is an independent research and development center in the field of polymeric materials. And uh, it was established in 2015 by TNO in the province of Limburg. And it's located in the Hemelot campus in the south of the Netherlands in Helene, uh, close by to Maastricht. It has now, at the moment, three uh, separate uh, programs. The first one being sustainable buildings, which focuses on decreasing the energy consumption of buildings by developing innovative uh, optical materials and coatings. The lightweight automotive, which work on developments of materials and processes for lightweight mobility applications. And the one I make part of, uh, additive manufacturing, which puts knowledge together uh, to enable functional 3D printed parts giving uh, reliability to the process and allowing the use of printed parts in high-end use applications. So filament, uh, fused filament fabrication uh, is one of the many different uh, additive manufacturing technologies that exist nowadays. Um, I'm gonna talk about fused filament fabrication and uh, or simply called FFF or sometimes FDM. I'm not gonna go deep into the basics, but I prepared a sketch uh, to help with understanding how the process works. So it works basically with a polymeric filament that is fed into a print head. This print head uh, is hot uh, above the uh, softening temperature of the polymer and moves in the X and Y direction. So this polymer that is fed into this print head is squeezed through a nozzle that goes around uh, 0.4 millimeters in diameter and this polymer is, uh, is deposited into a build platform. This build platform can, um, can go down every layer in the Z axis. That means that once you draw your part in the build platform, the build platform goes down in one layer and therefore, in the end, you end up with a 3D printed object. Due to the um, layer by layer nature of the process, uh, you can see in the pictures that the parts have a layered structure. So I also brought a, another sketch that helps us understand how the polymeric nozzle deposits these beads next to each other and also above each other. As you can um, imagine, the printed parts, uh, in the end, they are highly anisotropic. That means they have different uh, strengths for different directions. And this brings us to the bottom line, which is that the vertical strength, so what we call a Z strength, because it's in the Z axis, has around 20 to 40% of the strength of the direction of the filament. For composites, that means if you have fillers or fibers inside your polymer, it's also worth mentioning that the implant strength is much higher because the fibers are mostly uh, always aligned that way. And plus the rheologic uh, feature of the composites, uh, the, the connection between the layers is also gonna be lower uh, compared to plain polymers without fillers or fibers. So uh, anisotropy being one of the biggest challenges of fused filament fabrication, uh, uh, brought us to develop a solution for uh, this uh, this feature. So the, the the solution is 
an add-on device that can virtually be used in any printer. That means with few modifications. And it uses a preheating technology that induces the, bond, the bonding between the layers, between the different layers of the 3D printed process. So with that, the Z strength, the, the direction in between layers is much higher and therefore the anisotropy of the part is gonna be much lower. This uh, b right technology fits virtually any commercial printer and in the end yields a structure that is much more uniform as you can also see in the picture on the top. In the right hand side, there is a part printed without the device and on the left hand side, there is a part printed with the device. It's possible to observe that uh, there are many more visible layers in the part printed without the device compared to the part printed with the device. So at first we, we tested the, the, this, this B-Rite technology with glass fibers polyamide composites. At first, we expected an augmentation only in the Z strength, as uh, I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. But for our surprise, uh, there is a, a, an increase also in the direction of the flow in around 34%. But the breakthrough is that in the Z axis, the Z strength, there was an increase of more than 180% uh, using the v -Ride technology. And this shows uh, how powerful this, this tool can be in uh, fused filament fabrication. Okay. And, and now uh, we are uh, working with uh, different materials and parameters to understand even more what the possibilities are because we, we, uh, we tried to print uh, polyamide, which is one type of polymer, is a semi-crystalline polymer, but there is a wide variety of polymers which you can use 3D printing with. And therefore, we are also trying to go one step further and uh, understand how, how the, the device works for different polymers. Okay, maybe can I ask a question? Because the picture where you show the, the with and the without uh, the number of uh, uh, layers, uh, when you see, look at the, the, the without layer, then everything is, let's say, very much neat to each other. And where the width, it's a little bit, let's say, turned. What, what, can you explain, is there a reason for it looks a little bit, uh, whether it's, it's, it's not, not uh, right anymore? Or uh, am I totally uh, incorrect here? Um, I'm not entirely sure what, what you mean about uh, being crooked. Well, you, see, when you see it the without picture, you see the, the, the layers neatly to each straight. other. Straight. Mm -hmm. And with, then it's a little bit, let's say, turned. It's, it's uh, uh, wonky. Yeah. Now I understand your point now. Um, so these images are from a computer tomography uh, imaging. Uh, mm -hmm. They were made by our partners in Germany and they are extremely precise. But what we see, I, uh, what we see on the right hand side is that the layers they are very straight because that's how uh, every layer is deposited. Yeah, They're yeah. gonna be straight to each other. But on the left hand side, because we have more heat into the process, uh, the layers they also go closer together. So in the end, uh -huh. you, you 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 lose a little bit of this uh, uh, this straight path. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because the layers are more uh, glued together. Okay. Clear. Okay, so uh, this uh, brings us to the advantages uh, of the, 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 the project and the, and the device, of course. The main objective of the work uh, was to turn prototypes into real functional and usable parts. The scenario nowadays is changing a little bit, but fused filament fabrication is still widely used for prototyping, and that's, uh, that's what the b technology is there for, so that we can print strong and reliable parts that can be used in, the, in their final application to create, uh, and that therefore will decrease production time using less material and consequently less money. Um, but the, 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 the bottom line is uh, we are research center and the thing is that we cannot bring this technology to the market ourselves. But instead, we are looking for partners that would like to develop this work further. So, this technology is especially beneficial to increase the Z strength or vertical strength and consequently decreasing anisotropy. So for instance, partners like uh, printer manufacturers that would like to improve their process and deliver stronger and more reliable printers or material dealers that uh, wish to deliver parts with much higher strength. 
And uh, if you have any idea or want to try something out, please feel free to feel welcome to, to get in contact, in contact with us. We also like uh, always to discuss new things and to get new questions into something that we can develop further. Okay. So uh, there is, I think there is a picture. I just, before you ask, I would like to, to bring it here. Ah, yeah. um, it's a 3D printed part that we, <laughs> we printed. is a, a nut and a bolt that they are functional. Yeah. They are big, as you can see from my hands. Yeah, yeah. And the, 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 the greatest idea is that with the technology, you can uh, yield much stronger parts, but with the same reliable process that you had before. So you can print very well complex shapes like this one with overhangs, mm -hmm. but much stronger. Okay. And, and then thank you very much for the explanation. The, the, is it for the, uh, let's say, a commercial 3D printer? Uh, company, it's it's an add-on in the for the three D printer. Is it an additional head, or what? What is the, the let's say the component you have developed for the BRI technology? Uh, okay, um, yeah. To to be very honest, I would like to to disclose everything here, but unfortunately, I cannot talk much because it's <laughs> under pattern revision, okay, yeah, okay. as you could imagine. Yeah, yeah. But what I, what I can say is that is a uh, preheating technology, and uh, there are like over ten different preheating technologies in the market that be in a patent or in in publications. Um, everyone brings a different idea, and we have our own, and I'm. Very happy to talk about, but after we can uh, file the patent. Yeah. Okay, well, that's, that's clear. And the same counts for the materials, I guess, or can you use a standard material, a filament? Um, what do you mean about standard, like Lava? wide, well used? Yeah, I mean, is it, is it, sh it should the, the, the filament or the materials be adapted for using this VRI technology, or can you use standard, which is just available on the, mar at, on the market now? Ah, okay, I understand. Um, in this case, you can use the process exactly how it is. Um, the BRI technology, you assemble into, into the printer. Mm. And in the end, um, you don't actually do any change in the process. So you can use the same material, same temperature, same everything. But you just plug in the add-on there and then you yield uh, better properties out okay. of it. Okay, very clear. Okay. So... Um... Go ahead, the next next slide, or this is the, the, the presentation? Yeah, this was the last one. Uh, so I, maybe I spoke a little bit fast, but uh, oh, no. that was everything. So I would like to thank for the attention and also, of course, uh, if you have any further questions, please let me know. I can go back to the slides and explain a little bit better. Okay, well, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, this is a, a purely TNL or, or Brightons Materials project, or are you working already have you been working already with partners in this project? In this project, for now, uh, we uh, this project started uh, a little bit over a year ago. Uh, it was a partnership between the um, University of Eindhoven and the Bradlands Materials Center. Mm -hmm. Actually, where I started, I was in the University of Eindhoven. And uh, it is actually a consortium, so it involves other partners uh from germany we have a message for safety here. okay <laughs> okay well, this is it oh you're working at the office sir that's everybody yeah, works yeah. at home nowadays but okay but go ahead yeah yeah every every couple of hours you have like the the, the safety uh, no. uh yeah call yeah. so that they know that everything is working and also they give some uh some some remarks over the corona crisis and so on okay but uh, anywho yeah it's a approach. yeah uh, back back to your question it's a consortium so we have partners but partners to develop the b right technology, the, the b right technology. We don't have partners that can or would like to 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 put into their printers because uh, we we just developed it, and now we are trying to 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 give one step further and uh, and see what uh, actual printmakers, printer makers, or yeah, people that print materials can can do with it. Okay. Okay, well, that's clear. Well, I, to be honest, I don't have any questions more, uh, anymore. I think it's, it's pretty clear. And as always, I ask at the end of a presentation or interview, 
a little bit more about the, the, the person behind the presenter. I will always ask what is your favorite music or your favorite uh, food or city or whatever. Uh, so I'm just curious what that is for you. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, that's, that's uh, interesting. Um, to, to be honest, I, I, I will start with the fact that I'm a musician myself. So I play uh, violin, I play guitar, I sing, and I have three siblings and we all do that. So okay. I love making music uh, with them, especially um, they play the piano too, what, what, I, can, what I cannot do. And uh, one of my greatest hobbies is to sit behind a camera and, um, and record different parts of a song and then putting them together and listening to it. Um, yeah, regarding to music, I, I'm always very peculiar. Uh, I, I always listen very closely to, to music. So the band that I like the most is it's a, an American band called Dispatch. They, they are um, uh, an American soft uh, rock band and also songwriters. Yeah. But the, 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 most, the, the thing that, uh, that shines the most is the fact that they help out people uh, in need from all parts of the world. And they have extremely well-built songs with lyrics that sometimes make you think even more than when you're writing a book. So, yeah, that makes me, uh, I feel very, very good about listening to their music and to their lyrics. Okay. <laughs> very well, interesting. Yeah, well, interesting to learn about. Uh, I mean, it's always, I, I've, I've done many interviews and there was always different things, but funny enough, several of them are playing music themselves as well. So... Uh, Apparently, doing research in combination with making music is something, uh, I don't know, maybe there is a link there or a relation. It could, could be. But, but anyway, uh, thank you very much, uh, Caesar, for the presentation. And uh, so we stop together now with this, this interview. So I would like to thank all the people who are watching this, uh, this uh, interview. And uh, the, this week, we'll also have another interesting uh, guest. And he will talk about Internet of Things, 3D printing and also surfing. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to, to be here and uh, wish to see you soon.